Special guest, so I'm going to just give you a little bit of a, a couple of ideas here. We have the microphone there and there. So what I'm going to do, since it's Sacramento, is whoever asks the best question, I'm going to send you a bag, a double bag with hoodies, shirts, hats, hopefully some gloves, all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, so whoever does the best question, the most interesting question, I'll get your information after the uh, Q&A, and we'll get it mailed out from our warehouse. So our guest today, former Strike Force champion. Unfortunately, I know we're in Nate Diaz territory right now, but he put a beating on Nate there in his last fight. So before he comes out, I'd like to show you a quick package. Born in San Jose 34 years ago, and later nicknamed the punk for his penchant for causing havoc inside the gym, Josh Thompson was a budding prospect in the UFC in 2003 displaying talent and toughness that looked like championship material. He would go on to realize that potential by twice capturing titles in strike force. But long before Thompson became a professional fighter, the punk made mistakes in his youth that landed him here in Santa Clara County Juvenile Hall. And he still goes back in the hope that others too can turn adversity into triumph. I was put in there for fighting and you know I was in there for 35 days. When you got out, makes you appreciate everything from just being able to walk to the fridge and grab something whenever you want. I think as a young kid, you learn that freedom is so much more valuable and so much more important. You know, I'm not here to influence them to start fighting. I'm here to influence them to start to find something that they really love and they really want to grab a hold of and just run with it. All right, good evening, guys. Good evening, sir. I want to introduce Mr. Josh Thompson. Let's just start off by doing this real quick. This is my belt. I was a former world champion. You guys can pass it around. Do you enjoy when someone tells you what to do, when to go to the bathroom, when to brush your teeth, when you can eat? Okay, walk in the line, be quiet. When you get out, it's that feeling of, man, I never want to go back there. I've been in here. I just chose my life to go a different way. Now, I knew what my goals were. I, was, I just, I knew I loved training. I didn't know if I was gonna be the best. I didn't know if I was gonna be in the UFC. I just knew that that's where I wanted to be. Life is a choice. When you get out, you have the choice to do whatever you want in life. Kids, that when they think something bad happened, they're in juvenile hall, my life sucks, it's over, you know? And they think it's over, they think it's done. It's not, it's just starting. You've got so much time to make something out of yourself. You know, I mean, I could go to an IT school and in 14 months you'd have a whole new career. You know, your life is never over. The one thing I want you guys to all remember is this. Every single one of you guys and everybody in this world is better than me at something. You're better than me at something. Just because I'm a fighter, just because I've been on TV, just because I've done all the things that I feel are great in my life. But dude, you're better than me at something. Whether it's drawing, whether it's being an artist, whether it's playing a guitar, whether it's something. You just need to find it, you need to live it, and just make it yours. If you do that, man, you got everything to live for. You got everything you want to do. Do it. Make it happen. The guy that used to talk smack about all the WC fighters back in the day, Josh and I had a running battle. But what people didn't realize is that we really like each other a lot. One of my good friends, Josh, that was the punk tops in. So 
So as you guys just saw, yeah, I do a lot of community stuff. I just did turning wheels for kids last week, uh, build a bike. We like, um, built up to 4,000 bikes for the kids in the local San Jose area. And then uh, Strike Force, what they used to do is they used to help raise money. So we used to do like a charity golf tournament. So just trying to stay involved in the community down in San Jose. And then now I'm trying to just try to do stuff also like in the New Jersey area, uh, North Carolina area and stuff like that. So we're just kind of running around trying to find new ways to, to get kids out of doing things like this because... I've been there, done that kind of thing, and it just shows that if you point your life in the right direction, you can end up being something that you never realized you'd be. And this is the one thing I never thought, honestly. This sport came at the perfect time, the perfect opportunity to kind of, I guess, save my life. You know, and people say that a lot. A lot of fighters say that. <clears throat> but um, I can't say whether I would have been good or bad or what direction my life was going, but this was something that kind of helped get, get my life in the right direction. I knew I loved training. I knew I loved being in the gym got me away from the people that I need to get away from and focus me in the areas that I really love, you know, doing. I knew I wanted to be competitive. I would wrestle in high school, college, those type of things. But I knew I wanted to be competitive. Randy Couture said this. Uh, when he got done wrestling in college and trying for the Olympics, he's like, I didn't know if I wanted to get a real job. He's like, I just knew I still had that competitive drive and I wanted to, to compete. And then look where it took him, you know? I mean, look at all the things he's done in his life. So that's kind of the direction that we're looking to foot, that I'm looking to push towards for other kids. I'm not saying that kids got to be fighters. I'm just saying that kids sometimes need a little nudge in the right direction. So, any questions? I didn't see where the microphones are at, so I didn't see who had questions there. You want to talk about the Raiders, huh, versus the Chiefs? That'll be another time. <laughs> but, but be ready for Sunday. Be ready. Uh, yeah, hey, yeah, uh, for you guys to lose again. <laughs> All right, well, hey, uh, my question is this. Um, you did some many charities uh, in the Bay Area. Um, what was the most memorable charity you did over in Jersey? Um, you know, really right now, the one in Jersey, we've just been actually focused on me just going to the local schools, areas, and things like that, just kind of working with the community kids, and that's about it. Not so much working with the charities over there. The charities are really that I've been working with here is Turning Wheels for Kids here. Uh, I have a charity event tomorrow in Santa Cruz. Uh, it's like a, like a celebrity basketball game thing. I'm not really calling myself a celebrity, just so I'll make sure that's clear. Okay. It's just that uh, they called me and asked me if I'd be interested in playing. I can't play basketball either. So um, so that's another thing that we were focusing on. So tomorrow is to help raise money so, with the Warriors. And uh, it'll be in Santa Cruz. Like their D-level uh, basketball players are there. So it'll be us versus a couple of them and just uh, helping to raise money for the kids in the area. All right, good luck. Good luck tomorrow night, and be ready for Sunday. Your Chiefs are getting weapon. <laughs> no, no, no. My Chiefs are going to smash you guys. <laughs> All right, any other questions? What's up, bud? How's it going? Good, good. Uh, I know it's bad to fight with emotion, but have you ever fought anyone that you truly just did not like? And then, if so, uh, how did it affect your performance? Uh, if you guys watched the Clay Guida fight, that was a fight that I felt that... In the first round, I felt like he was greased up. And if you notice, the rest of the fight, all I tried to do is just kick his head off. And the fight didn't go my way. So the rest of the fight, it was just one of those fights when I fought him in strike force. It was, I came out of the first round. Every time I put a submission on, he just slipped right out, slid right out. Everything was just, didn't seem to go my way in the first round. I'd never been cut in a fight. I got cut in the first round. I came back out to the corner and, and was yelling at my own corner. I, for me, if you notice, when I fight, I fight with like a smile on my face. I'm usually, I love fighting. I've been doing this since I was a kid. Sometimes it got me in trouble, and sometimes now here I am. So what I've done is I really just enjoy it so much. I mean, think about the things that I've been through, and now where I'm, you know, where I'm headed. I mean, I'm one fight away from being, you know, fighting for the title. I was supposed to fight for the title here in Sacramento. So I think about where I came from when I wasn't making money fighting, and I think how dumb I used to be when I did those things, and all the emotion that went through me then, and I think of the emotion now, and um, I enjoy it. I enjoy it so much. If you see I'm out there smiling and I have a good time, I mean, you're paying me to do what I love. And people have said this before, is, you know, if you're getting paid to do something you love, it feels like you never worked a day in your life. And that's me. So I feel like every day I get to go to the gym and I've never had to work. And I want to continue to do that. Watch January 25th at the United Center. When I fight Benson, I'll be out there with a smile on my face. Thanks, man. Uh, thanks, man. Hey, Josh. I was wondering, after you knocked out uh, Nate Diaz, he seems to be kind of knocking you for the knockout. He, he doesn't act like it was very legitimate, but it was pretty gruesome. What do you make of his comments? Uh, I really don't care. <laughs> no. uh, I, don't let those, I don't let things like that bother me. To be honest, um, 
his corner threw in the towel, so it doesn't really matter what he says. His 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 corner gave up for him. So yeah. That, that to me is good enough. That you're not even allowed to throw in the corner in California. You're not even allowed to throw the towel in in California. It says to wow. notify the referee, let the referee stop the fight. So and obviously I did something right. Would you even care to fight him again? Not really, right? Not, I mean, not really, but I mean, you know, the, I don't, I don't, those are the things I don't make the decisions on. You let the UFC make the decisions on those. I've got other things to worry about right now. I got to worry about Benson, and uh, that's gonna. He's, he poses a lot of threats to me, man. He's a dangerous fighter and uh, very experienced. Think about it, he's been the champion the last three years. Yeah. So those are things. I got other things on my mind right now. Well, good luck. Good luck on your on your fight, man. Hey, thank you. Hey, what's up, Josh? Thanks for coming out, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I see you do a lot of work with a uh, charity, and uh, I live in Salinas, which is like 45 minutes uh, south of San Jose, and uh, me and my mom actually work for after-school programs trying to keep kids out of trouble, man. Would you be willing to come out and talk to our kids maybe someday? Of course. I'm actually in Salinas quite a bit. I was just on k -Don this morning. Yeah, the radio station. So right? I'll yeah, do yeah. k again on, mon on Monday morning, and okay. then uh, to help talk about the charity that we're doing on Sunday. Okay. So that's another thing that we're going to be doing. So uh, yeah, I try to go on k -Don. when I'm out in a fight camp. I try to go on there at least once a week okay, and just talk it. about upcoming things that are coming along with not just just thinking the charities but also in the communities as well as like uh, the fight stuff kind of keep people informed of what's going on in the fight world okay well, thanks mm -hmm. man thanks brother. hey just get a hold of sam or kate on and then they'll they'll organize it all maybe we can do something with the radio station as well all right man sounds good thanks, thanks man what's up josh huh? um so diaz has been calling out you and henderson in a tag team match uh <laughs> henderson doesn't seem like a good matchup for your partner who would your partner be um Honestly, I would take Henderson. Like, Henderson would be my partner, to be honest. Uh, we get along. We're cool. We had fun in Chicago last week, you know, we helped promote the fight. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm a big advocate of people that are well-rounded, and he's definitely well-rounded. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'd want to – he'd be a perfect partner. Right on. Good sports shit, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Question. You know what? All athletes, man, think they're going to be able to do what they do forever. You know what I mean? Be it baseball, football, fighters. You're calling me old right now? Not at all, bro. You're a young guy, man. Really young guy. But my question is, to those fighters who aren't going to always be a brand, you know, that aren't fortunate enough to be a brand, when do you begin to think about what's next? I mean, you know, for yourself, have you thought about what happens after fighting? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm going through that right now. So, like, last night I drove home right after I got done uh, yesterday. We did a Harley Davidson shoot here yesterday. And I got done doing the Harley Davidson shoot, and I drove back home because I'm opening my own gym, like a cardio gym in San Jose. Because I'm thinking about life after fighting. You know, you got to be able to take care of your family, you got to take care of your, you know, your family mainly, but you know, make sure you can still afford to live after fighting's done. I mean, you see professional athletes, and it's funny, I just watched a doc documentary on it. I don't know, I'm all over the place right now. Yeah, I watched a documentary on it about how um, professional athletes that make millions, they're broke, you know, and I think it's like 80 something percent right. that are broke, and they've made millions. And I can tell you I haven't made millions, but I've also focused on making sure that I own my house completely. I don't have a car payment. I live within my means. Those are the most important things, I think, to make sure you educate your children. Because in society, it's all about just putting it on a credit card these days. So I focused myself on, you know, that I make sure I own my house. I own my car. I don't have a payment. You know, my gym I'm paying for all in cash. I'm not taking out a loan. I'm making sure that everything is paid for. Those are the things that I've done, making sure that I have money put away. Um... Those are things I focus on, but the next step is making sure that I'm at my gym full time and running your gym. No one cares about your business more than you care about your business. So for me, this is the focus of making sure that I'm there all the time to make sure it's successful and it runs. Those are the things I think that fighters need to start thinking about. Good deal, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, Josh, uh, uh, no disrespect, I know you've had some injuries in your career, so this is sort of a question on something I'm going through now. I'm gonna. Take your invisible line I'm, I'm, Yeah, I'm, I got uh, some false ones right now. So, how do you deal with the, the obviously this is a, you know a combat sport injury that you deal with the teeth get come out um, when you're told you need to take time away from training and mentally you you feel like you're sharp but somebody's telling you your body can't go through that right now you need a rest and for me personally I'm sitting there going I know I can roll I know I can train. I could do everything, nutrition in the in the in the weight room, but I can't touch the mats. I gotta, I gotta let things heal. I gotta get, you know, the implants in my teeth. I gotta do all this stuff first. How do you mentally get past that roadblock? Because it, it eats at you. Yeah, what I've done is like, there's always something to become well rounded in the sport. There's always something you can work on. So, let's just say like I broke my ankle. I had to sit at home and just eat ice cream and get fat. 
so as soon as my ankle and I was able to up and walk, I started walking on the treadmill, I started doing the like, kill walks, things like that. But there's times where you just, your body needs a break. Um, you can focus on just doing cardio. Let's say, because I actually had surgery on my wrist. So I tore something on my wrist, but I could still run. So I was out there running. I wasn't rolling or grappling or punching mitts or hitting the bag or doing whatever, but I was out there running. I was still watching my diet, eating clean, getting ready for what was next. There was um, a period about 15 months that I was out because I broke my ankle. I broke my ankle three times, same bone. I had surgery on it right above the plate. I broke it again. And then like, as soon as the doctor said it was healed, I went and I started kicking it again, broke it again. So it's the most frustrating thing, but just staying clean, eating your diet, you know, staying on your diet, just making sure you're staying healthy. Focus on other things that you can do. You know, I did like um, strengthening for the upper body when I couldn't use my, my legs. Right. Just, try, just try to adapt your training to what you can do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I kind of have two questions. Uh, did you ever debate not taking another fight until Anthony Pettis was healthy? Um, and also, when you win the belt, who do you want as your first match? Uh, I like where you're headed with that. Good, good thinking. <laughs> you're thinking ahead like I am. Um, the option of taking of not taking a fight, it lasted about two seconds. When I said, well, how long is he out? He said 10 months. And I said, no, OK, we got to fight. Because, I mean, it's already been since April since I fought Nate. and you kind of want to make sure that the fans always get a chance to keep you fresh in the mind kind of thing. So you want to make sure that the fans get to see you. And I remember at the end of the day, I really love fighting and I got in this to fight. I didn't get in this to sit on the sideline. And I know I've waited my whole career to fight for that belt. You know what I mean? But I don't want to waste 10 months, another say, listen, that would be almost a year and a half of wasting and sitting on the sideline of not fighting. You know, I got in this sport to fight and yeah, sure. I could be kissing away my dreams, but I still love fighting. I love doing this. I want to go to the gym every day. If I didn't, if I waited the 10 months, I wouldn't be in the gym. I'd probably just be getting fat and just sitting around and doing things. So this is something I definitely enjoy doing. As far as who I want to fight after that, uh, I, don't, I don't really get to pick and choose. Maybe Nate again. I could use the payday. I know that was a little jab, huh? And that's why they call me the punk. Hi, Ben. My question for you is there's a lot of um, young children, you know, five, six, you know, upcoming, wanting to wrestle and do, you know, the whole MMA, UFC thing. How do you feel about that? Do you feel that they're too young to start No, that? not at all. No? I think three years old, you should have your kids in wrestling. Oh, wow. You want to teach them discipline? Nice. You want to teach them discipline? You put them in wrestling. You want to teach them to work hard? You put them in wrestling. Um, I, can't, I can't support wrestling enough. You know Do you think I mean? you would ever start a mentor program? Uh, possibly, yeah. I think it's something that I definitely, I definitely love working with kids. I, like it, the, the purpose of me starting my gym was it's not an actual fight gym. It's a cardio gym, a fitness gym. It's made for, for everybody, for people that are 50, 60 years old, for people that have kids that want to just come in and burn some energy off that are 10, 11 years old. And the workouts are all different. They change for kids that have, like for me, I, have, I don't have physically have ADD but I really do have a hard time paying attention. So I do, we designed a workout, uh, the AKA guys, we've been doing for over 10 years. And the bike workout is, we basically do a minute on the Airdyne and a minute of a, of a work, you know, like some sort of plyometric, come back and do a minute on the Airdyne and a minute of plyometric for 30 minutes. And that's been our cardio for over 10 years, three days a week. So all the guys, Cain Velasquez, Daniel Cormier, Luke Crockhole, John Fitch, Josh Koscheck, myself, we've all been doing this for 10 years, mm -hmm. maybe even a little more. Um, these are things like to make sure that you always stay active and you kind of grow, I guess, uh, we, it makes it easier to work out. You know, when you go to the gym, you just walk on the treadmill, it gets boring. No one wants to go. That's why people don't go back. So this workout changes daily and time. And so this is good to bring your kids in, keeps their, their mind frame, just keeps it going. Lets them keep working out. Makes, makes them want to go back the next day. Loud music, lights dim, just activity. So you think the age of three is good? I think the age of three is good. Awesome. Okay. Three years old to five years old, perfect. Put them in wrestling. Thank you. They'll make make them make them tired. They'll go to sleep. <laughs> Hi, um, you fought uh, Gilbert Melendez three times in Strike Force and lost twice to him. How important is it to you to beat him in the UFC? Um, it's not really that important anymore. I mean, there's so many other people for me to fight. I do think that. Um, I'm not really battling with the whole thing with the Gilbert thing. I'm really focused more on being the first strike force fighter to win the UFC title. Okay. You know, that to me, that solidifies everything for me in my career, just making sure that I'm the first strike force fighter to win that belt.
Okay. That's important to me. What's up, bud? Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice headband. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. What you got for me? Um, what can I do to be in the UFC when I'm older? How old are you? Five. Five? Well, like you just heard me say, you should probably start wrestling. <laughs> I do wrestle. Well, there you go. Stay. There you go. <laughs> Stick with wrestling, stick with wrestling till you're about 10, 11 years old, then start working on a little bit of boxing, no contact just yet, okay? Work on the boxing, let the brain develop, and go from there. But wrestle, 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 hard work. Learn the hard work, all right, bud? Hey, Josh, uh, as a professional fighter, do you think there's more opportunities now that there's more weekly fights between the two major companies or when there was more companies for the fighters to fight in um, before Strike Forces bought out WEC, um, Pride? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think right now the fans are getting what they wanted. You know, so when you hear the media and you hear the fans complain about like, oh, well, there should be more other organizations, you guys wanted all of us in one to see who would win and be the best. Well, now we're all here and you guys are getting what you want. And I think, to be honest, this is what the fighters have always wanted. You want one belt, you want one champion, and you want to know who the best is. Well, guess what? I'm knocking on the door and I just couldn't be happier to be here. Okay, so. Thank you. This is, this is exactly what everybody wanted. This, and I'm just here to give you what everyone wanted, was to, to fight for that belt and to fight all the best guys. That's why when I was like, hey, you gonna fight Gilbert again? Why? I fought him three times, okay? You know how many times I got tweets and messages about, hey, man, I'd love to see you fight Pettis. I'd love to see you fight Benson. Well, here it is, and then everyone keeps asking, when do you find Gil again? I can, we can't win. So, but no, I'm looking to fight all the best guys, you know? And so if, if Gil's up there, then hey, well, maybe we'll fight Gil again. But right now, I'm focused on Benson. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What's up, Josh? What's up, buddy? Uh, I was wondering, uh, who do you think poses more of a threat to you, uh, Henderson or Pettis? Because I know you mentioned that you thought the arm bar was sort of a fluke, and that uh, it wasn't. No, okay, so let me, let me clear the air, okay? okay? I've got a lot of respect for Pettis, and I know maybe it came off like a little, kind of like a jerk, or it just came off as a punk, or whatever it is. Um, I've got a lot of respect for the guy. I've got a lot of... Um, for him and Benson both. I think they're both very talented. Right. They're both very good at what they do. And um, I just feel that for Benson stylistically, that he's more of a threat to me as far as the styles match up. I have to worry about everything with him. With Pettis, I felt like I had a really good game plan for the first four weeks, five weeks of my camp when I was preparing for him. Right. And I felt that there's a lot, of, <clears throat> a lot of room in his game that I can exploit to go ahead and win. So for me, Benson's more of a chess match. I have to play. I have to play chess, and it's a, it's a who can get there first kind of thing. And I got to be careful with him. He's, he's good on the ground. He's got good wrestling. And, uh, you know, he is southpaw. His stand-up's going to be coming at different angles and things like that. Those are things that people need to understand you have to prepare for. I spend the last, the last eight weeks, you know, preparing for, for Benson because he's, he's left-handed. Right. So those are things you have to prepare for. Your styles have to match up, and you have to make sure you're ready for that type of thing. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hi, Josh. Um, the year is 2016, and the zombie apocalypse is upon us. <laughs> Which three current UFC fighters uh, do you bring with you? You're trying to win that box, huh? Stuff? Yes. <laughs> the most interesting question. All right. The zombie apocalypse. And then the most three fighters that I do what with? Uh, that you'd want with you in the zombie apocalypse to, to survive. Okay. Man, you're, putting me, you're making me think right now. I would probably go with Frankie Edgar, because he's got really good footwork. And uh, he could probably avoid and help me a lot. It's fast, quick, you know, move around really well. Um, somebody with long reach, probably Gus or John Jones. Kind of just hold him away from us like this. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I mean, probably just one of my teammates, knowing that I always have someone have my back, either Kane, DC, Luke. Gray Maynard, you know, those kind of guys. Those are the guys I'd probably be looking. I would definitely know? choose Kane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only because he's big and he's the champ. That's why, huh? No, he's a beast. Yeah, he's a beast. <laughs> All right, Tough bye. ones. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, hon. How are you? Good. Good. What was your name? Melody. Melody. 
Are you having fun? Yes. You nervous? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> what can I ask for you? How do you feel about being in the UFC? <clears throat> you know, I've been here before, and it's gotten a lot bigger <laughs> since I was here last. <laughs> um, it's great, you know. Um, is there anything you've done that you like doing a lot? Um, besides Hit? No. No? Basketball, football, baseball, I, I sports. Can't even make you play a, a flute. Shoot on a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta lower it for you a little, huh? Do you play an instrument? I'm having a hard time with the violin. <laughs> oh you're having a hard hey, but you're trying, right? Do you like it? That's yes. a no, huh? <laughs> we should try something else out. Huh? Maybe not the violin. All right. Well, so I really do like being here. I wouldn't want to fight anywhere else. And I think in most fighters, what they've done is they've decided that, like for me, when I was with Strikeforce, I didn't think I was going to fight anywhere else. I thought I was going to end my career there. So I really loved fighting there. But then when the UFC took it over, <clears throat> I couldn't have th I thought of a better place to go. I mean, I fought in all the biggest organizations in the world. So coming back home here, because I used to be here from 2000 to 2004, um, I felt like just coming home. You know, it was a, it was a, a Warm welcoming from everybody. I mean, people don't understand, like Bert in the back, he's the one back in 2000, he picked me up at the airport and was like, hey, you know, now in the back, you guys probably don't see him, but he runs the whole show from the time the first fight starts to the end. I know that was kind of complicated, huh? I confused you. <laughs> <laughs> so to answer your question, yes, I love it here. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Josh, how you doing? Good, how are you? You know, uh, we as fans, you know, we watch the fights and we kind of judge them ourselves, you know, whether it's a fight or a football game and you see jerks, the officiating just, you know, either it really isn't there. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on how would you change the 10 point, point must system? How would you go ahead and actually get judges who knew your sport instead of a boxing judge doing an MMA fight? How would you change the scoring system in, in what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I really probably wouldn't change the scoring system. I think that we, the fans have to understand is that the judges are human just like the rest of us, and there is human error. So, like, let's use the GSP and Hendricks fight as an example, okay? There was so much flack over the whole fight. But the issue is, you got to remember, GSP is going to leave a legacy behind in this sport that pretty much can't be matched. I mean, I can't think of another fighter and there's, that can match it. So as soon as he walked in the ring, okay, you got to remember the judges, they've seen him fight for years, probably judged, I don't know how many of his fights. And they were thinking to themselves, that's GSP. He's already won the first round. Unless he gets dropped or knocked down or anything along those lines, they're human just like us. When, when you see GSP, aren't you a little bit in awe? Yeah. Thank you. They're the same thing. They're humans just like us. So when he came out and he didn't, and the round was close the first round, he won that round. Okay? He's, he's going to leave that legacy behind. It's GSP. So the second round, obviously, went. To, I think everyone can agree, went to Hendricks. The third round, I think, was... GSP or Hendry, it was close. I think what happened in that fight was the rounds that GSP won were really close. The rounds that Hendricks won, he dominated. So everyone went back and said, oh, well, he dominated those rounds. Yeah, he dominated, but remember, it's only a round system. So at the, once that round's done, it's done. It's over, you gotta put it behind you. So I can't really say that we can change how the judging's done, maybe add half, half point scores so the fights are closer, which is gonna make it even worse, because then now, the guy only won by half a point. <laughs> that makes it even worse. So I don't think it really makes that big of a difference, to be honest. You just got to remember the judges are human. Yeah, it sucks that that happens, but if you don't like it, don't let the fight go to the judges. It happens. Though. It happens. What's up? Thanks, Josh. <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to say I was uh, front row at the San Jose fight where you knocked out Diaz. So first thing is a statement, which is uh, yeah, that was an excellent knockout. So anybody to... Uh, uh, questions is pretty crazy. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So the second uh, the second part would be the question, how good did it feel to knock out Diaz? <laughs> uh, you know, it felt good. I've had some knockouts before in the past, but um, I think the biggest stage in the world on the biggest card I think I've ever been on um, definitely definitely played a big factor. Had some, woke up in the morning, was feeling a little run down. I was like, oh no. I was actually, actually able to take a nap around noon. And then after the nap, um, I woke up and I felt like a million bucks. So I got to the arena, I was pretty much ready to fight. You hear fighters talk about it all the time. When they come to the arena, 
you either have it or you don't. There's days you just don't feel like when you get up to go to work. You don't feel like being there. And, then, and fighters are the same. Like it's the human error thing, the, the human thing again. It's like we, we're just like you guys. We get up, we go to the... We go to work, you guys go to work. Sometimes I don't feel it, you know, but I still gotta go out there and put on a show. You know, I gotta go out there and perform. And those are the things that sometimes fans, I think, don't take into consideration. But uh, it felt good to answer your question. All right, we're gonna have a few more questions. So the guy in the white hat, it's the last question on this side, and it's your turn. Thank you. Go ahead. Who's your favorite fight club manager? <laughs> I, isn't there only one? There's, no, 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 it's got to be Katie. It can't be this guy. <laughs> it can't be this guy. Oh, you mean for a manager of a fighter? Or fight club manager? Fight club manager. Fight club manager is just Katie, right? Yeah, she, she, you know, she's like my little annoying little sister. All right, Katie, stand up. Where is Katie? There she is right there. All right, give her a hand. I am my annoying little sister. And, and it was nice to meet your little brother, Katie. Nice yeah. to meet you. Everybody. <laughs> she's got her little cheery section up there. Oh, Lord. Okay. What's up, man? What's up, buddy? Did you do any work on the new UFC game? No, we just... Okay, yeah, I was scanned. We did some photos. Yeah, they spun us around in a chair, and they, yeah, they did a lot of the stuff for the new EA game. Yep. So you didn't do any, like, motion capture or anything like that? No, I didn't for this one. Uh, what do you feel about people who are making video games assigning stats to different fighters and how do you feel about like the kind of stats that they give you mm, i think they just take the stats that they get probably from from past fights and they just try to probably put them into the game so they've taken fights from like say my three gilbert's fights the nate diaz fight and they probably try to just implant implement that into the game but so for me if they got it from a, a past fight i really don't care but does it kind of annoy you if like one uh aspect of your game is like you feel it's better than what they say, like if they give you a number score that's a little bit lower? No, like, not at all, because I'm in a video game. That's pretty dang cool. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, that's something I would take to my kids and be like, yo, your dad was in a video game. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, Joe Silva actually works with uh, EA and uh, Sean Shelby giving them statistics, fighter strengths, things like that. So they come right from our matchmakers. Oh, okay, so it's not necessarily really opinion based on the game makers. Right. Okay. All right. I'm still in the game. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Hey, Josh. Hi. Good to see you. First of all, thanks for taking that fight with Benson on the week of my birthday. I'm pretty stoked about that. Are you going to make it out to it? Absolutely. There you go. won't miss it. Wouldn't Chicago miss it. in January. Who would want to miss that? Who wouldn't want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> my question is, um, with all the time you've spent talking with at-risk teens, um, and now it's been a, a number of years that you've been doing that, do you ever hear back from those kids? No, not really. Um, you know, you just hope for the best. I mean, that's realistically what it is. Like, the stuff for Training Wells for Kids, I don't really get to actually hang out with the kids and talk to them. It's really just raising the money, building the bikes, and making sure the kids get bikes for Christmas. You know, when I was a kid, the, the number one thing I wanted was a bike. You know, that and, like, the, remember when the scooters first came out. So the two things. But, I mean, like, it's, it had something to do with, like, being a bike. You know, so that's the number one thing kids want is a bike. So that's the one of the big, that's why it's the biggest probably thing that I work with. Um, just seeing kids that you know that light up when they see their bikes, and that's something that kids have always wanted. But no, to answer your question, no, I haven't really got to talk back more with kids after, like being able to work with them afterwards. But you just hope for the best. That's really what it comes down to. Especially the kids in juvenile hall; those are the hardest ones because we're not allowed to like really communicate with them outside of it, anyways, unless we run into them. So that's kind of the. But just make you know. But all the work's done inside, so you just hope for when they get out that it worked, it worked out and they, they can get their, their life point in the right direction. Like you saw from the clip, my focus is, is I'm not trying to tell the kids that they need to be fighters. <clears throat> I'm not trying to tell them that they need, they need to do anything to be sports, act, like any type of sports activity. I don't, want, I don't need them to do that. But I have had friends and cousins and things like that that didn't really know what direction they wanted to go. But one day they were in the kitchen and they were cooking and then all of a sudden they loved cooking and they went to culinary school, got a degree, got done. Now they're head chefs down at some of the restaurants in Las Vegas and Los Angeles. So my other kids maybe will make fun of them because they're cooks, but they're making good money and they love what they do. So like I said, those kids in there, those kids that are there, just like everyone in here, okay, and all the kids in here too, that they're all better than me at something just because I'm a fighter, but they're all better than me at something. They probably can draw better than me, probably play basketball better than me, probably do a lot of things, play golf better than me, 
Okay, so you just have to find out what they're good at and what they love doing and just give them a little nudge. Well, you know? thanks for doing that. Thanks for being a, a good <laughs> example for them. What's up, Josh? How you doing? Good. I got a, a question to ask you. I'm bummed that you weren't able to fight Pettis. Me too. But I'm also excited that you can fight Henderson so you can crush him. But uh, <laughs> is it okay if I can get you a little bit motivated, motivated if we can uh, face off? Yeah, we'll have to do that afterwards because we're going to do the weigh-ins coming up here pretty soon, right? Yeah, we can come down. Okay, come on down. Come on down. Just send those two the sound. Come on, let's go. Send them down. The kids only come down. Let's go, let's go. Come on, we got two minutes before weigh-ins. These guys are starving in the back. Okay. I've been there, done that. Any other kids in here? Yeah, You're not a kid. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, guys. If you're parents, come over here so you guys can take pictures. We're going to do our stare offs. What's up, guys? I signed all your stuff earlier. What's up, Melody? How you doing, bud? Good. All right, guys. Here we go. Got that game face. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the nicest guys in the business, Josh Thompson. Thanks guys for coming out. All right, so the winners are the two kids, you and the girl for cuteness. The question wasn't that good, but she's too cute. So we're gonna give her, a, we're gonna give them, so will their parents come down so I can give them my information, please. Thank you everybody, we've got a special presentation with one of the superstars of MMA coming out in like 10 minutes. I've never backed down. I'm a fighter, and when somebody's here threatening me, it's not gonna be good for them. His experience and his age, is it gonna hold up against me that's rising up through the ranks? I hit people, they fall down. I'm gonna do everything in my power to do that. We'll see what happens when we get in there and we mix it up and we're gonna punch each other in the face. I have that little bit of extra killer instinct that he doesn't have. That's gonna be enough to walk away with the world title that night. Do you believe that I'm the best fighter in the world? It's all about who's the baddest dude.